Sports Channel presents the Illinois High School Association Class AA Baseball Championship, featuring the Thunderbolts of Andrew High School against the mighty Maroons of Belleville West. Welcome back to Lamphere Park in Springfield. Hello, everybody. I'm Mike Lederman. This is the Class AA Championship, the last game of the prep baseball season. If you were with us for the Class A game, you saw how good it was and how good the weather was. Here's hoping the Class AA is certainly as good a ball game. Joining me is Mike McDonald, who is baseball coach at DeMorton High School. Mike, two contrasting styles tonight. Yes, uh, one's a power hitting ball club. The other one's a kind of a singles type ball club. And I think you're going to see exciting hitting and, and exciting baseball tonight. Well, let's take a look at how these two teams got here. First of all, Andrew, well, they had the toughest time really against their arch rival Sandberg in the game before they got to state. Extra innings, nine to eight. Then they've scored a lot of runs in the last two. Well, that's where their hitting came in. And, and like they said, they're strong through the lineup. So we're going to see that all, you know, through this tournament. As far as Belleville West is concerned, they went into the tournament losing their last three regular season games, but they got on the winning track, three nail biters, then a blowout. Yes. And, uh, you know, when you, when you play those type of ball games, you got to, you know, you got to be in a ball game and you got to be able to score the runs in the tight ball games and then you have the, the blowout, but you know, they're not going to be that way down here. Well, both these coaches are veteran coaches, a combined 26 years uh, of experience on the Belleville West side and another 12 years on the Andrews side, so that's nearly half a century of high school coaching. Well, there's a lot of experience here and it's going to show tonight. All right, let's talk about the pitchers for Andrew, a very deep staff, but they're going with Jason Emersek, who pitched an inning or so of relief in the semifinal game. Jason is a very strong pitcher. He's a power pitcher. He's a strikeout pitcher, uh, fastball, uh, slider, uh, good control. So you're going to see him around the plate all night. And as far as Tom Buss is concerned, he might be considered the number three man on a two-man staff, but he's hardly a slacker either. He is, and, and he's the bulldog. He's six foot, 215, uh, just a very good competitor, fastball sinker, an unusual pitch for high school kids. So you're going to see exciting. Well, as you can hear, there's all sorts of excitement revving up, so we'll be back with the opening lineups and the opening pitch in just a minute. Here's a look at Lamphere Park, Robin Roberts Field, named after the legendary and Hall of Fame Major League pitcher from these parts. Pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies, of course. Let's take a look now at the Andrew lineup. Both teams, of course, had a coin flip to see who'd be home and visitors. And Andrew, the visiting team, Tom Snyder, will be uh, leading off the second baseman, followed by Bill Cusack. Jason Emersick, the pitcher, bats third. Zach Pringle at shortstop will hit cleanup. Steve DeHaan, the catcher, bats fifth. Followed by Mike Olson, who had a homer earlier in the tournament. Bob Nacelli, the DH. Ben Cutwick at third. And batting ninth, Ken Martello. Martello in center field. Looking over the Belleville defense, the infield left to right will be Eric Bernard, Sean Keefe, a junior. He'll be the shortstop. Jeff Burton, the second baseman. And Tim Meth is the way he pronounces his name. He is also a junior. The outfield, Cotter Hilpert and Osborne. The catcher, Brian Valerius. And on the mound for Belleville West, Tom Buss. Tom, a six foot one inch, 215 pound senior. Six games, a 3 2 record, 27.6. Uh, rather, he's pitched 27 innings, given up nine earned runs, 18 hits. There you see it. And the interesting stat right there, Mike, is the uh, walk to strikeout ratio. Not real good for Tom Buss. Here's the first batter, Tom Snyder, stepping in. First pitch is low for a ball. You're right. You know, you talk about his ball strikeout ratio. It's uh, you like to have about a two to one, two strikeouts for every. Uh, uh, walk on a high school level, three to one in college ball. But uh, as you're going to see, he's going to be a competitive bull, uh, bulldog, and he's going to throw a lot of fastballs and his sinker. Tom Snyder up there, four for four in the semifinals, three for four in the quarters. This guy is on fire. Second baseman fouling that one down the right field line, evening the count at one and one. Hey, Bale up there, buddy. Come on, go get something. Snyder's a nice little second baseman, can you know really make the pivot defensively, and uh, I think you see some good defensive play from him also. One-one pitch from Buss. A little off-speed pitch in the dirt. Count is two and one. Nice pickup in there by the catcher Valerius. Here's a good look at Buss. Gets a lot of mileage out of that hat. <laughs> two-one pitch. Fastball foul. And there is Frank Ganser, the coach. He is keeping the ball down, and that's what you're going to have to do in this state championship game. 
Bus well rested. Last pitched in the sectionals, and that one, I think Snyder thought more was coming than actually was. Count is full. Bernard at third, has got a tough play. Ball is fair, and a nice stretch over by Meth. And we've got one away. That's a tough little play, you know, the little chopper, and, and uh, you got to stay in front of the ball and you really get rid of the ball quickly and a lot, a lot on the ball over to first base in order to get any kind of runner out on a ball like that. And give uh, Tim Meath a lot of credit, too. He reached into the dirt. Here and we got see that it one. again. Two hopper to him. He had the back hand to make the long throw. And Meath stays down low and picks it up. Brings up the right fielder, Bill Cusack. Cusack, two for four in the semifinals. Pretty good hitter, 347 hitter in the number two slot. You can hear the Andrew fans in the stands getting into it early. This one to center field. Scott Hilpert. Two away. You know, all, all day in the ballpark here, the, the, the air seems heavy, and the ball is not carrying very well in this park you know, during this tournament. Center field, you're looking out toward the east right there, actually more like the northeast, and the famous train tracks behind the outfield fence. Good hitting background. You see there were trees at the 415 mark in dead center field. Foul lines 320 down each. Here's Jason Emersek, number three hitter and pitcher, or as... The coach calls him. Frank Answer says he's our stud. He sure built like one. <laughs> Drafted by the Pittsburgh Pirates. He'll either play professional ball or go to school at Evansville, where he uh, has a baseball scholarship. Count is one and one. Emerson batting 347, eight home runs, 46 runs batted in. To his left and through. Sean Keefe can't quite make the play at short. And Emerson is on with the game's first hit. Just by the reach of uh, Belleville shortstop, Cotter. Or Keith, I'm sorry. Keith. And there's a good look at Jason Immersek. With two outs, he's on first. And here is Zach Pringle. Pringle, the shortstop. Good numbers there. Two homers, 22 runs batted in. Also leads the team in triples with three. Switch hitter grounds this one to the right side. Kick by Burton. Has plenty of time to make the play. So, top of the first inning, no runs a hit, no errors, one left. We'll go to the bottom half. Belleville West taking their first turn, no score. To the bottom half of the first we go. The first at bat for the Mighty Maroons of Belleville West. Fine nickname, Mike. Yeah, One yeah. of the greats. One of the greats. Let's take a look at the starting lineup. Uh, the uh, lineups for, for West. Second baseman Burton, followed by Meath, Bernard, Matt Osborne will bat cleanup. Joel Sigman, then the shortstop Keith, Chad Cotter, the pitcher Tom Buss bats eighth, and his battery mate Brian Valerius will hit ninth. Defensively, Andrew sets up this way. The infield will be Ben Kotwick at third. Zach Pringle back from a bad wrist at short. Tom Snyder at second base. Mike Olson, who got dinged on the throw, has got a bad headache. They didn't know if he'd play, but he's starting. He'll be at first. The outfield, Leatherman, Martello, and Cusack left to right. The catcher is Steve Dehan, And the pitcher, as they gather around, Jason Immersek. Jason has done a fine job this year. He's 6-2, and two, a record with an ERA of 1.30. He's ha he averages about two strikeouts in any. So, you know, you're going to see, like we mentioned earlier, he's a pretty much a power pitcher, and he's going to uh, be able to, you know, if he gets around the play, he's going to strike out a lot of hitters. Here's a leadoff man, Jeff Burton, batting 259, known for his speed rather than uh, actually his hitting ability, but he's in the leadoff spot because he can get on base, or when he does, he's a threat to motor. You can see those numbers. No home runs, four runs batted in. He's got two doubles for extra base hits. And Emerson. Jason is just overpowering Burton here. Oh, and two on the foul tip. Throw went down to first for practice. You know how to use 
Burton, 5'9", 155-pound senior, 0-2. On the outside corner, ring him up. First strikeout for Emerson as he just painted the black with that outside corner pitch. And that's, like I say, you know, he's got a good fastball, good velocity, and that ball apparently is moving pretty nice. Brings and up the uh, number two batter, Tim Meath. Well, Jason, you know, being at the start of the game, he's going to be very strong. He's going to be overpowering. Of course, we're going to see it in the later innings that some of this might tail off. Meath, 330 batter, struggling at the plate lately, however. Coach Chuck Hassenstab's a little concerned about him, but obviously he leads the team in most offensive categories, including hits, Ooh. RBI, and doubles. This one into short right center. Center fielder Martello. Eric just, or uh, yeah, uh, Tim, excuse me. Tim just got under that ball a little bit. Dropped his top hand, came up underneath the ball, and resulted in a high fly to center. Well, here's the hot hitter now for Belleville West, Eric Bernard, the third baseman. He is a combined five for uh, five for seven in the last two ball games. Four runs batted in. Fastball is high. Bernard's got a lot of power, and you can see by those numbers what. Uh, the coaches want to do with them is getting more get them more aggressive and I guess they've done it certainly for the state championships and that's the time to do it when you're down here everybody's got to contribute and you know you got to give it your best shot right here there's no more tomorrow two nothing count as Emersek has missed twice that one gets the outside <laughs> corner two and one Plate umpire is Tom Toman of Arlington Heights. Very emphatic on the call. Good close up of Emersek. 2 1 pitch. Pringle the shortstop. Gets the good hop. Over to Mike Olson. 1 2 3. And that's the first inning for Belleville West. Nothing across. We'll go to the top of the second. No score. The broadcast rights to this program have been granted to Sports Channel by the Illinois High School Association. Any rebroadcast or other use of the program or its parts without express written consent of Sports Channel on the IHSA is prohibited. We move to the top of the second. No score in the first. You see the lights are on. Obviously, they have yet to take effect as it is a beautiful dusk settling over Springfield. Steve DeHaan, Mike Olson, Bob Nacelli, the first three hitters scheduled against Tom Buss. Here's the catcher, DeHaan. Inside on the fastball. Well, in the last ball game, in the semifinal game here, he took one off the knee and behind the plate, uh, foul tip, and it really, uh, you know, they had to take him out of the ball game, so yeah. it's, it bothered him a little bit then. 1 0 pitch. Right That's back up. to us. Look out. Whoa! Our cameraman almost got it. The press box almost got it. Oh, yeah! A Sports Channel souvenir. Look out. <laughs> <laughs> got to throw him back here, though, folks. I got to tell you. I want to know where huh? your net was. <laughs> Wrong crowd, wrong crowd. 1-1 one, one pitch. Over but low. Steve DeHaan's got good power. Pull hitter. Three for four in the semifinals with three runs batted in today. As we told you, got dinged in the knee. And see how it affects him. To left field, just got under it. Chad Cotter there. One away. Tell you what, the, pe the pitchers are keeping the ball down, and you know that's going to be very effective. And it's going to be very important in this ball game. That brings up Mike Olson. Olson at first base, another one of the walking wounded. As we told you, he took a shot off a throw, hit him right in the head, and he spent most of the afternoon in bed, seeing double, triple, and stars. But he's giving it a shot tonight. Actually, Frank Anser said he was watching the Cub game and it, it was painting him. And I don't know whether it was because of the, the injury or the team. I don't know. But Cubs won, so okay. Well, he leads the team in hits with 46 on the year. And, uh, he, you know, his 465 batting average, he's a pretty good hitter. Also a team leading number. 1 1 pitch from Buss. And 
the dirt to Valerius. Olsen is also a pretty good pitcher, but with the depth on the staff, there just hasn't been any room for him to pitch. They appeal to first base, and no, he didn't go, says Charles Williford of Lyle, who was the first base umpire. So we've got a 3-1 count here. On deck batted the, the designated hitter, Bob Maselli. 3-1 pitch from Buss. Inside corner, count is full. Olsen, big strong kid, 6'3", 205. A lot of power. And he will go to the gaps as well. Full count, here's the pitch, and this time he gets it. That looked like his sinker right there. First strikeout for Tom Buss. Going through the heart of the order for Andrew in fine style, at least the first way through, and that brings up Bob Nacelli. Nacelli, the designated hitter, he is uh, batting instead of the left fielder, Mike Leatherman. Bob's numbers. Back through the middle, that'll be a base hit. Second hit for Andrew. Good example of going right back with the pitch, just the way they teach you, right through the box. That's what you do. He fought that one off. And, you know, and that's the difference Third in the game today with the aluminum bats. Pitch. The ball inside, and, you know, if you don't get your bat out quick enough, you can still get the base hit off the handle. And that's an adjustment a lot of players have to make when they go into the pros and get those wooden backs. They don't have that kind of latitude or flexibility. They do with the aluminum. Well, and that makes it difficult on, on scouts trying to recruit kids, too. Ben Kodwicka sends this one toward the gap in left and making a fine catch is Cotter. A great catch. Chad Cotter going to his left, taking a double into the gap away from Kodwicka. No runs, a hit, one left. One and a half, no score. Bottom half of the second inning, no score. State Double A State Baseball Championships here in Lanfear Park in Springfield. There's a good look at Frank Ganser, the longtime coach at Andrew High School and third runner up in the Cal Ripken Senior Lookalike Contest, Mike, huh? Yeah, he does look like him, doesn't he? I'll tell you, he's had a lot better record than Cal. Long-time coach, speaking of long-time coaches, 26 years for that man right there, Chuck Hassenstab, former infielder with the old Milwaukee Braves organization, played about three or four years, got up to AAA, said he couldn't hit the slider and had trouble with the fastball. The curb fooled him a little bit, so he decided to go to school, but he certainly played uh, pro ball for a while, going to school at the same time. Here's Matt Osborne, leading off the second inning, the right fielder batting 288, a couple of homers, 16 runs batted in. Osborne facing Jason Immersek, who had a 1-2-3 first. One ball, one strike, the count. Matt with power, two for six here in these state finals so far, the quarterfinals and the semis. Checked his swing, ball was inside. Jason's really pitching him inside, and he's pitching him tight. He's trying to control the inside part of the plate against him. They shade Osborne to the opposite field, and they've been scouting him because he is a much better hitter to left. Left fielder Leatherman is playing him about five steps from the line. You can see that. They're playing him almost like a right-handed pull hitter. Big gap in left center there. You can see that. And down the right field line. Well, you can see these coaches have done their homework here at the uh, state finals. Obviously, these are two teams from the opposite ends of the state that don't play each other during the regular season. Right. But uh, they get their little scouts out here during the tournament, don't they? Yes, they get down here and they scout each ball game. To play. There he goes. 3-2 pitch, and just like that, down the left field line. Quickly picked up by Leatherman and holding to a long single is Matt Osborne. Alert fielding out there and left by Mike Leatherman. Now, we might see a lot of things happen here. 
Uh, Chuck, Coach, coach uh, uh, Hanson style, you know, does a lot of things. He likes to hit and run. He likes to bunt. So we might see some of that right here. Joel Sigmund, normally a pitcher when he's in the field. There's the DH right here and 349 hitter. Lays it down. Play will have to be to first base. Nice and sacrifice. The sacrifice works. And now we got a guy at second base and uh, scoring position, and that's you know you're playing one run at a time in this tournament, and I think you got to go after it right away. Well, both these teams <laughs> played in bunches in the semifinal, each scoring a dozen runs. But you you know you never know when you come into the tournament. You don't know if it's going to be you know you anticipate a two to one, three two type ball game, but you know if you score a bunch, you you know that sometime along the line it might not be that easy. Sean Keefe, shortstop. Junior takes it right in there, a fastball, on one. Sean Keefe has got a lot of room in left center field with, again, the center fielder Martello shaded way over toward right. Here you see him at the top of your picture. That's a center fielder. So he hits anything up to the middle or to the left over the shortstop's head. He could very easily end up at second base. 1-1 one, one the count. Keefe is improving as a hitter. Got a couple of hits so far in the tournament. They're, They're playing the hit to the right side. They got the shift over to the right side of the diamond. They're looking for continued improvement from him. This could be a tough play. And Keefe with speed will not even draw a throw from Zach Pringle. So the first threat of the ball game right here on the infield single. Moving over to third is Osborne. And Belleville West has got first and third, one out. He topped the ball, hit the top half of the ball. As you can see, the ground being hard, the ball just sails over the pitcher's head. After, you know, hit in front of the plate and then sailed over his head, and there was no chance of him getting him out at first. Well, this is the kind of situation that Belleville West likes. Chuck Hassenstab has got the number seven hitter up, Chad Cotter, and he is almost like a, uh, a second number two hitter. He is excellent at hitting behind the runner. Well, you can do a lot of things in this situation. Being a lefty, of course, it helps, but there's a lot of movement here. We've got a possibility of uh, maybe a, what we call a force block steal or just a straight steal or a safety squeeze. Outside ball one. Kodwika at third is playing even with the bag. The rest of the infield, middle of the infield, playing a double play depth, will give up the run at this point in the ball game. Also two for six for Cotter so far. Good pitch from Rimerset. And the sound of the train. A common one here at Lamphere Park. One ball, one strike. One out, first and third, bottom of the second. Foul ball down the right field line. So far, Coach Hanson saw, saw, stopped. Well, I can't have trouble saying his name. Hassan <laughs> stopped. Okay, Hassan right. stopped. There we go. So far, he hasn't given any signs, but I, you know, you never know what could happen here. Strikeout number two for Emersek. Go right back to him. And a big one for Andrew right here. Gets him to two out, and the pitcher coming up. Well, the pitcher sure doesn't hit like one because. <laughs> Tom Buss, he hasn't been up all that often, but well, he's got some. He's pretty almost good hitting numbers. 500. <laughs> you know, he's uh, uh, here's a chance for for him to help his own cause, being at the plate with uh, two out and runners in on the corners. I anticipate if he gets two strikes, I think we're going to see something here where the, the runner may go and, and see if they can draw the throw and try to score the runner from third. Well, that's so. Bob Gillen, the pitching coach out there, talking to Emersek. Gillen, uh, who went to school. Here at Andrew, played a little pro ball of his own, now runs a, a milk distributing company with his dad and delivers milk to a lot of the Chicago schools. He said he sent a bad batch to Harlan, but he was only kidding. Harlan defeated by Andrew earlier in the tournament. There's Bob. Pitcher, number one, number 40. Tom so Buss. after that conference, here is Tom Buss with two outs. The runners remain on first and third. 
Matt Osborne and Sean Keefe. Again, the outside corner, strike one. Tom Toman certainly calls him as he sees him, and so the folks in Pekin can hear. There's the old Jack McDowell fake the third move. Osborne wasn't fooled. Certainly Hassenstab wasn't coaching over at third base. First base is pitching coach Roger Miller for uh, Belleville West. Yes, yes, oh, yes. Tough play for the shortstop, but he will not make it. The ball through Pringle, one run scores. And let's see how they score it. I don't think they would have got him. Yeah, They'd I don't think it's a play anyway. It's a, it's a base hit for Tom Buss, so the pitcher helps his own cause, bouncing one up uh, past the shortstop. This is a tough play. The shortstop, I think, would have, uh, Pringle, would if he had a backhand, he might have had a shot at the play. Well, Matt Osborne scores. Give the run batted into the pitcher, Buss, and so Belleville West has scored first here at the bottom of the second to lead it 1 0. And here is Brian Valerius, the catcher. Valerius at 309. Runners lead away from first and second. Ball in the dirt to Hahn is there to stop it before it gets too far. Hassenstab loves this kid, Brian Valeris. Said he's just an absolute workhorse. He can just go on all day. Also, he uh, calls his own game. Rare for uh, a college player, much less a high school player. He's the catcher. And I asked Chuck about that. He said, look, we discussed the pitchers and the closing batters before the game, but I don't flash any signs. Catcher calls the game. The pitcher can shake him off. Pickoff I, attempt. Know, I think there's sometimes here, uh, you know, the catchers, you know, they get a feel of the ball game. The pitcher has a feel of the ball game. And if they're in sync, then, you know, I think, you know, it'll go smooth. But if they're having problems, then I think the coach can step in and take over. And, and there'll be times he'll call an occasional pitch. But, uh, you know, for the most part, you can let them go. 1-0 pitches outside. 2-0. Runner on second, Sean Keefe. Top of your picture. There he is. On first is the pitcher, Buss, who knocked in the first run of the ball game. On the corner again, Emersek has been very effective when he's found the outside part of the plate. Outer half black. That outer half is still white, though. Yep. 2-1 <laughs> pitch to Valerius. Right back to Emerson. Good play, good reflexes. Shot puts it. But Belleville West gets on the board. A run on three hits. No errors, two left. We're through two complete now with the Mighty Maroons leading 1-0. Ready for the top of the third inning after Belleville West scored the run on the seeing eye single from pitcher Tom Buss. Buss will start with the bottom of the lineup. Ken Martello, the center fielder, and then the second time through with Tom Snyder and Bill Cusack. Well, There's Timmy it. helped himself out that time at the plate, and uh, you know he had a, he took, they took advantage of the opportunity with the runner in scoring position. There's Martello batting ninth. Ken's bat says the Andrew coaching staff is a bonus. He's in there for defense, but he can certainly help his team by getting something started here offensively. No homers, eight runs batted in, 14 hits on the year, one for extra bases, a double. Bus gets that one. And almost where the hit by Bus went is where Martello put his. Just to the right of Keefe, and Sean couldn't make the play, so it's a base hit to left field. You can see how hard that ground is. You can see when the ball comes off the bat, it hits the ground out in front of the plate and takes a big high hop Second all the way out past and over to the third baseman's head. And the shortstop had the in-between hop to try to make the backhand pick. We'll look at the shortstop, Sean Keefe. And here is Snyder. Base hit left field. Cotter quickly on the pickup, and just like that, first and second for Andrew, and nobody out. 
Well, Tom Snyder uh, didn't waste any time. No, he's he's a real good hitter, kind of a slap type hitter, and a good leadoff hitter. Right fielder, Bill Kusak. Here is Kusak who fly to center field, his first at bat in the first inning. First and third shortened up, anticipating the bunt. Kusak doesn't show it there. You know, the type, the type of ball club Andrew is, I don't know if they will bunt, but because, uh, you know, they do have a lot of power through that lineup, and they're coming through their two, three, four, and five hitter, which are very strong hitters for him. Kusak, uh, Good spray hitter. Now we get a call here. It's a ball. You take a look at that again. I think you'll see what he did. He, he was set on the rubber and then he took and reset himself without stepping off. Second base umpire Richard uh, Biederman made the call quite emphatically from behind bus. And very quickly, Four Chuck Hassenstab comes out. You can go. Okay. Let's huh? listen to Chuck. Right. We're going to see if they're, if they're back. I thought that looked funny, you know? you know. Did you catch it? Well, I, I looked, and it, something looked funny. You know what? You, you know, he said he said twice. Something just looked he funny. Came here and then he went up. up again. I think we're listening to uh, Frank Ganser there somehow. It didn't sound like something that the pitching coach would be telling his team, but both coaches are wearing wireless microphones, so we may be able to get some some area color. Okay, here he's set. Now he's going to come set again. That you know, constitutes a ball. There's Cusack now. Runners at second and third. First baseman, third baseman playing halfway. Rest of the infield is back. Down the third baseline, and Frank Ganser makes the play. Cusack, a team high 10 doubles, also has three home runs. There you see his teammates trying to get the rally going here. They trail one to nothing, but have a real threat going with a 1 1 count, second and third, and nobody out. Curveball didn't break quite enough. And 2 1 now. Real batter's pitch coming up right here. That's right. It's, you know, he's. The pitcher's behind the count. He doesn't want to go any further. He's going to have to bring this ball on the plate. And now we got a lot of options. We got bump. Let him swing away. Outfield playing straight away on Cusack. They go to third. That's got to be a risky play. It is, and I don't think the third baseman saw the signal that was given. You know, there's got to be a key there to put this play on, and I don't think he saw it. He was about six feet from third base when Bust threw the ball. Normally it's a timing type play where you throw and, and the third baseman breaks at the same time that the pitcher starts his throw. Head down, head down. Emerson on deck. Again inside. And Mr. Buss is one pitch away from a whole lot of trouble. Number three hitter due up. Top of the third. Andrew trailing one to nothing here. Three one count. Base hit. One run in. Here comes the throw home from uh, Cotter, and they hold the runner at third. Going into second is Emerson. So Cusack, the third straight single to left, brings home Martello. They hold Snyder at third, and the throw came into home plate, but high couldn't be cut off, and the runner, Cusack, alertly took second base. And uh, Cusack's hurt out there. Okay, here's the replay. Nice base hit between short and third. And the, the throw's a little bit high, but I'll tell you what happened here in this play, too. The uh, first baseman didn't get over in time to you know, get in the cutoff position. And the catcher had to try to handle the ball and allowed the runner at first to go to second. Jason Emerson. That's, 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 I'm sorry, that's the fifth hit for Andrew. And now, again, second and third, nobody out. Now we're tied at one. Here's Jason Emerson. And the ball right in front of the catcher. 
Valerius and Brian couldn't find it for a second, but no advance. Jason is the probably the power hitter on their ball club. He leads uh, in home runs with eight and doubles with ten. Uh, he's the right man to have, have up there. He's got a chance to help his own cause now. Nobody out. Three straight hits and a balk have tied up this ball game and put Andrew in a position for a lot more. Foul down the third baseline into the bullpen area there. That's the Belleville West dugout down the third baseline. Andrew's dugout for the visiting team is the first base dugout. 1-1 pitch to Emersack. You saw the runner on third base, Snyder. And there's the runner on second base up top there is uh, Bill Cusack. And the pitch is now 2-1. The count is now 2-1 and one on the pitch in the dirt. Two one. Just off the inside corner, three and one on deck is Zach Pringle, the shortstop. Kusak, when he got that base hit and went in the second, looked like he jammed his foot in the base, and you know, it might be a factor here in trying to score a run on a base hit. Three one pitch is right in there. Well, the Andrew batters are trying to take off early on the three ball pitch, and uh, not. Not intimidated at all is uh, Tom Toman, the plate umpire. Three and two, runners lead off second and third. Down to third base line. Good play by the third baseman, Bernard. Very Eric Bernard play. saved a couple of runs right there. This was a great play. Eric just got himself in front of the ball, and that ball was hit hard. He makes a great play. Held the runner back. And makes a good strong throw to first. Snyder diving back into third. Bernard was quite happy to go over to uh, first base, get the out on Emersek. And that's the first out of the inning. Here is Zach Pringle. Pringle, a second of first ground out. His first at bat. One away now. Second and third, tied at one. Strike one, breaking ball. In this type of ball game, I know it's the second baseman and shortstop are playing deep, so they're going to concede the run on the ground ball. You can see his three hits already in the state finals for Zach. And there's another one. One run is in. Hilpert from center field. They hold the runner at second at third base. Cusack moves up 90 feet. Coming home is Snyder. And for Andrew, the hits just keep on coming. Nice strong hit by Zach. Pringle's a good little good looking left-handed hitter. Watch his nice level cut. Ooh, that pitch was right up by his wheelhouse. <laughs> Steve DeHaan, who fly to left. In the second inning is up here in the third. Still only one man out. Andrew is playing 90 foot baseball, but they're getting solid hits, and that one of the reasons why they can't advance more. Here's a wild pitch going way back to the backstop. Here comes the runner in to score Cusack. And all the way around to third goes Pringle. Wild pitch, just glanced and may have hit off the. I think it hit a shin guard. A shin guard, yeah, of, uh, of Valerius. Let's take a look here. We've got a decent angle. And oh, right off his toe. Foot. Right off his toe, and it kicked over near the uh, the Andrew dugout. And not only did Cusack score, but uh, Pringle went all the way around from first to third. Looked like they were going to try to squeeze or sacrifice Bunn anyway and play a safety squeeze at third. But the ball is in the dirt and don't have to worry about that. They may try it now. 1 0 pitch. This one deep to left. Cotter, foul ball. Chad Cotter 
You can see gets a good jump. That ball about oh two feet foul down the left field line. He got the barrel out early on the swing and was able to drive the ball right down the line. Ooh, just foul. There's activity in the Belleville West bullpen. As Mr. Buss has run into a rocky road here in the third. Right hander is Roy Tippett on the left and Sigmund inside on the right. Again in the dirt. One and one. There's the coach. Chuck Hassenstab. Doesn't, guess, seem, yeah. doesn't seem to change much expression. Another base hit again to left field and trotting home is Pringle. And each time a run scores, the Andrew team comes out like it's the seventh game of the World Series. And here comes Hassenstab and he's uh, Undoubtedly going to make a change here because we've had one, two, three, four, five hits already this inning. Let's listen in. Now we'll get that ground ball, okay? Come on. That's all right. That's all right. They're just aggressive. That's all right. We'll back. Come on, Tommy. Come on now. Let's go. Okay. He's going to leave Bus in. Four runs here so far in the top of the third for Andrew. Five hits, a balk, and a wild pitch. And that brings up Mike Olson. And if you think you're out of the woods with this guy, forget it. Olson had a home run in the quarterfinals. A double, three runs batted in. Struck out on a check swing back in the second inning. He's got a runner on first base, DeHaan. Well, he's got 40, 46 team hits. He leads that category, leads the team batting average, and I'll tell you. You know, one out of every two at bats, about what he's averaging. And he didn't get a hit the first time, so he's due. Well, the way these two teams play, a three-run lead is hardly safe, Mike. But uh, well, you, you know, right now we got ten hits and it's only at the top of the third, so that's between the two teams, yeah. And here is Olson. He is a specimen, boy. One-one pitch from Bus. Nice play by Valerius to block that pitch. Tom Buss didn't have much of a problem, gave up single hits in the first and second, but has had the roof, if not fall in, then teeter perceptibly on him here in the third. Runner on first base, one out, four runs already in. Could be two, but what a hop over the head of the shortstop, Keith. Coming around third aggressively is DeHaan, and as the throw comes in, going to second base, and beautifully thrown out on the relay, Eight to six to four is Olsen. If you see this play again, that ball took a bad hop wow. right to Lesson. And that ground so hard, as soon as it came off that grass and hit that dirt, it just, you know, 10 foot over the shortstop's head. Well, DeHaan motoring even on the ball hit in front of him. Went to third, but alertly, Belleville West, and again, the center fielder, Hilpert threw to Keefe at short on the relay to third, but Keefe made a smart play, throwing to Burton at second in time to get the batter, Olsen, trying to stretch. And here's another shot. Brings another runner home. This is Nacelli on the single. Scores DeHaan with the fifth run of the inning. 
is starting to get to Tom a little bit on the mound. He's starting to show a little motion, which you can't blame him in this type of ball game. Here comes Hassenstab out, and that will be it for Mr. Buss. He's got uh, Joel Sigmund. And uh, Tippett, as Hassenstab excuses Buss here in the third inning. Tippett. And he's going, as you heard, he's going for Tippett. A good Roy Tippett. Right. Ball hard. Tippett. Well, you heard him call him Roy Tippett, Tippet. right hander. Number 30, 36. Tippett. Tippett. Or is he just going in? Right here. All right, number 36. 36. Okay. 5'11 junior. Correct. Roy Tippett, 1-0 one, one oh record on the year so far. Got two down, right? And here is Tippett. His statistics, you know, he only has a 1-0 record, but he hasn't pitched that many innings. He has 17 two-thirds innings pitched. He's about 2-1 to one on strikeouts to walks. He's uh, you know, a big, tall, lanky right-hander. Looks like he throws pretty well. Good fastball. Well, he'll be facing the ninth man to come up here in the... Uh, Third inning, Ben Kotwika, the third baseman. Kotwika, who just missed a gap shot back in the second when Chad Cotter made a fine play going to his left to spear the line drive off Kotwika's bat. Um, Tippett's uh, a junior. He, according to the program, he's a younger. He's only 16 years of age, pitching in the finals of the state tournament. Seven hits so far this inning. Martello, Snyder, and Cusack all singled for one run after Imrasek went out on a fine play by the third baseman. Zach Pringle got a hit, brought in another run, followed by a hit by DeHaan. Then Olsen with a single. He was out trying to go for two. And Maselli with his single to left field. So five runs this inning. And there's a good look at Ben Kotwika, 0 for 4 in the semifinal this morning. One for two in the quarters. May be the strongest, physical, strongest player on the team, according to uh, Frank Answer. The last time he was up, he hit a line shot to uh, left field, if you remember that, to um, uh, Cotter. He made a diving catch on it. So, he, you know, he didn't get cheated at the plate the last time, so he's up there taking his cuts. Five one Andrew all five runs here on the top of the third as <clears throat> Tippett's first pitch is low and away. In the dirt Valerius again. Runner at first, Maselli is the responsibility of the starter, Tom Buss. Off-speed pitch, good one. In there for a strike, two and one. Long top of the third. You can bet it's a lot longer for Belleville West. <laughs> this might be a good pitch to run on 2-1. If they want to try something here, I think it would be a good opportunity to see what kind of arm the catcher has. 2-1 pitch. Runner doesn't go to the right side. Burton. And Tippett does his job. So Belleville West closes things out. But not until Andrew comes up with five runs, seven hits. There was a ball, a wild pitch, all kinds of offense for the Thunderbolts. They lead it 5-1. Top of the order to face Jason Emersek for Belleville West and Jeff Burton swinging and missing. Burton. Burton, the strikeout victim to lead off the ball game in the top of the first. Emersek now staked to a four run lead after two and a half.
Snyder, easy play. He got down there quick, from the, especially from the right side. Well, well that's left side had been a little different. That's why Bert's in a leadoff spot, you know. Uh, Bellevue West uh, thinks he's got to develop as a hitter, but once he puts the ball in play, anything can happen. He certainly has the most team speed of anyone. Here is Tim Meath. Meath fly ball to center. 19 runs batted in, leads this club. 3.30 average. I love that front foot. Ow. Now, if this were a major league dugout, you'd hear a lot of yapping going on. <laughs> Hot doggies. Yeah. Now, Tim's got the major league attitude. You don't rub, right? That's right. You don't want to show pain. I had a low tolerance. Good. <laughs> yeah. Why? Good curveball in there from Emersek, look like. Interesting, Emersek is projected as a catcher when he's not pitching to catches, and uh, on either the college or pro level, that's where he sees his future, and so do the scouts, whether he, in fact, signs with the Pirates, who drafted him on one of the lower rounds, or goes off to college. I believe he's got an offer from Evansville. He's got a scholarship there. It will be as a catcher. One-two pitch. And Down that's holes. one of the, you know, that's one of the quicker ways to go, you know, into pro baseball yeah, that's is very behind true. the plate. Very true. Yeah, being a good catcher, and he's got a strong arm, and, uh, you know, I, I probably he will stay there. Carlton Fisk said that, uh, among others, that, uh, you know, you, you can get to the majors a lot more quickly since there are fewer good catchers around. A lot of folks don't want to get into all that gear and take foul balls off their body for 15 or 20 years. In the dirt, ball is called strike three. And applying the tag is DeHaan, and it'll go as a strikeout. That was a called strike, I believe. Yeah. Number three for Emersek. And you can see Hassenstab is a little upset with that. Third baseman, Eric Bernard. Well, surprise, surprise. Chuck doesn't win this one. And here is Eric Bernard with two away. Bernard went out short to first, his first at bat. Yeah, and the curveball's working. He's got a nice, a nice curveball. It is a nice pitch. It comes over the top, and you got to get that down break, and otherwise it's not going to be good. You got to get it on a different plane than what the, you know, the hitter is swinging. All right, took something off there too. Yeah, that was another nice pitch. You know. A lot of kids will throw that curveball on a three-quarter angle, and, you know, it's coming flat, and you can follow a lot easier. But if the ball's coming down and breaking downward, then it's tougher to hit. 0-2 pitch. Came right with the fastball, low 1-2. and 5-9-0 and oh for Andrew, 1-3-0 and oh for Belleville West. Class AA state championship action right here on Sports Channel. Should take a look at Chuck Hassenstab. 26 years at the same location. Well, not in the third base box, but <laughs> as coach that's of a the long Mighty time. Maroons. That's a long time. That's a long time coaching, you yep. know, any level. Yeah. He said he was just in the right place at the right time. He was released by uh, Milwaukee Braves and just graduated school. And there's a shot to left field over the head of Leatherman. Bounce to the wall and going into second easily will be Eric Bernard. Big hit for Eric Bernard with two out. And he's, you know, he's done it defensively, right playing in the field, good, good fielding, court. and now he's done it with the bat. You know, he's a nice third baseman. Watch his hit. Boy, he gets up on top of that ball. Ball was up a little bit, but he got on top of it and drove it hard to left field. Got the big, you know, drove it all the way to the fence, and easy stand-up double for him. Well, if they were worried about Bernard's aggressiveness between the play he made at third and that hit, he's doing fine. Thank you very much. Here's Matt Osborne. Scored the only run of the game for Belleville West. Singleton came around to score on the single by the pitcher bus. Osborne 288 coming into tonight's game. Be a little higher now.
strike. A perfect night for baseball. Lovely. Incredible. Just beautiful. No wind. And again, a good pitch to the left hand batter going to his left. Flag is absolutely limp out there in center field. One two pitch. Just inside. Well you can see the confidence all over Emerson. And there is the flag you can see. Any ball hit is not going to get any help. From the elements it does feel though the air is very heavy. It is. And we know how hard the infield is. Two two. Uh -oh. Throw to first base. Good play by Olsen. DeHaan made that a little more interesting than should have been. But Olsen is there to make the play. Two strikeouts for Immersek in the inning. No runs. A hit. One left. So we are now through three complete. 5-1 Andrew. There's a score and Ken Martello for Andrew who started the big five run inning off last inning with a single to left. Came around to score the tying run and was the first of five Andrew runners to score in that five run third inning. Facing the reliever Roy Tippett. Tippett came in after Tom Buss the starter gave up five runs on the nine hits and got his first batter. to the Belleville West dugout area one and two good look at Martello eight runs batted in on the season 237 hitter we told you they see him improving as a hitter he's batting ninth and not known for his offensive punch, but he certainly did the job in that last inning. Yes, he did. You know, and, I, and I'm watching a lot of these hitters swing, and, and it seems like a lot of them are topping the ball. And what a lot of result, every results from the top hand rolling over before the ball made contact, the bats made contact on the ball. Chases that pitch, protecting the plate with two strikes, and that one goes over the top of the uh, first base stands. Here at Lanfield Park. One two again. Two and two. Blocked over there by Brian Valerius who has been a busy catcher. Trying to keep those. Uh, pitches in front of him. Two two. Seeing eye beautiful play by Burton. With his quickness, he's able to get to a lot of balls a lot of other second basemen can't. You'll see this again here. He's got good range to his left. He makes a diving stop, able to ride himself up, and make the nice firm toss to first base for the out. Plenty of time. Well, there's more IHSA championship action coming your way on Sports Channel. Don't miss our back-to-back -back coverage of the Class A and AA softball championships. Catch all the excitement beginning tomorrow at noon right here on the channel. Moon over Springfield in the background. And that is probably the world's largest softball. No question, as our producer director Rick Godwin reminds me. Leadoff man Tom Snyder, single scored back in the third. One for two on the night. Count one and one on Snyder. Back up the middle and again Burton this time can't quite make the play to his right. Put a glove on it but just couldn't come up you know, catch the ball on the play. The ball came up too a little higher than anticipated I think off the off the ground. On that play. Really like the jump that Burton got going to his right. But it's another base hit the tenth. For Andrew here in the top of the fourth one man out and here's Bill Cusack. Cusack had an RBI single in the third. Took second on the throw and later scored on a wild pitch himself. Close play at first base on the attempted pickoff. 
Snyder just getting back. In the foreground, Coach Frank Ganser. And again, the wild pitch, and this time Valerius can't come up with it. And down to second base goes Snyder. So that's the second wild pitch, the first for Tippett, second for the club. Well, as a runner on base, you try to watch the ball as it's being delivered to the plate, the angle that the ball's going into the plate. So if it's in the dirt, you try to anticipate that. And a lot of times, if it is in the dirt, you can break and get to second base and steal the base because of that. One zero pitch. Tippett looks to me, Mike, he may be overthrowing a little bit now. Well, he's trying. He's trying to overpower the hitters. You know, they've had some success tonight with hitting the ball, so he's going to try to see, you know, if he can throw the ball by people. And a lot of times, that affects control. Nine walks, 17 <laughs> strikeouts on the year for Tippett. As Mike told you, he hasn't pitched that much. Two old pitches high. And the thing with you know young people, young kids, and you know a lot, a lot of ball players themselves, if they don't play and get you know get a lot of innings in or you know a lot of playing time, it's hard. They don't keep themselves in shape and ready sometimes. And I'm not saying that, you know that necessarily is the case here, but uh, you know he has 17 innings on the season coming into this ball game. Uh, you know as a pitcher you got to do a lot of running. You got to keep those legs in shape because when you get tired, that's the first thing that's going to go on you. When the legs go, then control goes. Well, the walk on four pitches, the first given up by Tippett. Runners on first and second now with one away, and the number three hitter, Jason Emersick, is up. Emersick with that single to center in the first inning. 5 1, Andrew leads here, one out, top of the fourth. Tippett outside again with the fastball. Missing outside. 2 0. Oh. Neither one of these teams has ever won a state championship. Tippett looks very young. Of course, he's only 16 years of age. That's got to be a lot of pressure pitching in this type of ball game for a young, young man. Again, back to the backstop. And the runners will move up another base. Valerius. Kind of delayed reaction on that. Couldn't locate it right away. Wow, this is pitch a, number two. This is a matter of uh, being able to shift for Valerius, you know, shifting and get down and block that ball. When you got runners in scoring position, you can't let them get any closer. You know, they can't get to third and, and second, uh, respectively, uh, you know, on a pitch like that. You've got to be able to block the ball. Pringle, the shortstop on deck. 3 0 pitch. The bases are loaded. So Tippett's control is deserted in here. A couple of wild pitches, a couple of walks. And it all spells big trouble for the Mighty Maroons. I love that nickname. I don't care. That's terrific. Oh, I mean, I know, so I'm tired of the Bulldogs and the Huskies and the Wildcats. It's something creative once in a while. The Mighty Maroons. Oh, ours is the Potters. How's that? Is that right? Yeah. The Morton Potters. Is it, no, you say, what's a potter, right? What's a potter? <laughs> that's a guy who molds things into. Well, thanks. Shape. I mean, I thought there was going to be that. That's that's what I figured a potter well, was. I didn't know uh, if you knew that. Okay. <laughs> Gosh. But we have no logo. We, we can't. I, we have to, Is I there a history logo. of potting here? In yes. The, in, in Morton, Illinois. Yes. I see. Zach Pringle now with the bases loaded, one out. Oh. A two nothing count. And Chuck Hasenstab is telling Valerius, go out there and talk to him or slow him down or something. And Brian will do that. There's Chuck. The Morton Potter. So tell me about that. Well, uh, the community used to have a pottery in it years ago. And, uh, you know, when they founded the community, there was a lot of German settlement there. And uh, a lot of them were potters. And uh, they had, the, you know, a factory. And uh, so they named the school after the pottery 
and uh, we were called the Potters. So I can see the cheerleaders now. Go Potters, huh? Well, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> the football team gets called Hogs, though. All right. <laughs> figure that one out. <laughs> 2 0 pitch. Good play by the second baseman. The pitcher gets over quickly to cover Tippett. A run comes home. Boy, that was nice. But that could have been a lot worse for Belleville than it was. The first baseman, Meath, had been drawn in. Burton made the play. And good coverage by Tippett to get over. So it's a 4 3 put out. Coming in to score is Snyder. A 4 to 1, check it. The pitcher covering. RBI for Pringle. And again, Burton, you know, covered a lot of ground to get there to cut that ball off, keep it from going through. And it's 6 to 1. Here's DeHaan, tough play for the shortstop. He hangs with it, but drops the ball. Try to go back to third. And getting back was Imrasek coming in to score, Cusack. And let's see what the call is there. It's a nice play by Keefe, but he couldn't quite stick with it. Had the ball in his glove, then dropped it. Hit. First baseman, Mike Olson. Awesome. Trying to see how, how do they rule here. it. Maybe they rule it in there. It'll be uh, E6. E6. Dahan gets back in. Come on, Ole, hit it hard, buddy. Come on, Mike. Mike. goes over, on, moves over to third base. Cusack scores. Uh -oh. Way back, way back, looking up, now with room. Cotter thought that was going to clear. And two more runners come home. Emrasek is in, DeHaan is in. And it looked as though Cotter first thought it was going to clear the wall and then misjudged the fence. That ball hit was hit high, and again, if you look at this, one thing the left fielder does not do, he doesn't go all the way back. He got to go back and find the fence. He had plenty of time, you know, he could have caught the ball, but you got to go back and find the fence. You got to know where it's at. So give Mike Olson a double. And here is the designated hitter, Nacelli. Nacelli two for two, two singles. Four runs in here, call that one a base hit. A couple of hits, a couple of walks, four more runs. One of the big things that's happened in this ball game, you know, like Olsen, who is their leading hitter, has come up with men in scoring position and has, and has really produced and come through for him. They've had that opportunity in this ball game. Still two outs. Tip it. Gets the outside corner. It's 0 and 2. Two RBI for Olsen on that last double. Gives him three. 0 2 pitch. High hop for Keith. And Belleville gets out of it, but once again, not without a lot of damage. Four runs, just two hits. There was an error. Had a runner left. So at the end of three and a half, Andrew is pulling away nine to one. Bottom of the fourth inning, Andrew with a five run third and a four run fourth. Let's put some distance between them and Belleville West. Light starting to take effect now here in Springfield. And there's the crowd enjoying this one. A lot of the young ladies from Timley Park, I guess they call them the Andrews sisters, huh? Why is everybody groaning? Mike Lederman along with Hall of Fame coach Mike McDonald here bringing you the action on Sports Channel. This is Joel Sigmund. 
Lay down a sacrifice bunt in the second inning. Officially no at bat yet. Sigmund the designated hitter 349. His season batting average. Jason Imrasek rolling along here. Fouls this one back over our heads. Onto the old tin roof. Jason's pitching very well. He's got uh, his curveball is working good. His fastball has still got good velocity, good movement. Tim Meath has now gone to the bullpen to warm up uh, for Belleville West. Meath, the first baseman, 3 1 record on the mound, and he is in the bullpen now, so we may see a pitching change coming into the uh, fifth inning. Seven inning ball game, you know, regulation in high school. And we are in the bottom of the fourth. Sigmund, 2 2, the count. Two two pitch. Who? Sigmund just spanking that one on the outside part of the plate. Nice bat control there. But you had to protect the plate on that pitch. Ooh. You know anything close now? You know two strikes. You got to protect the plate. You got to be a little defensive in a way. You know if the ball's close, foul it out of there and then, you know get your pitch and, and hit it. Sigmund, a three sport athletic star. At Belleville. Something you don't see too much in there. Three sport athletes. Very, very rare. When one of the sports isn't Nintendo. You know, because, because no, all kidding around, Hassenstab, Chuck Hassenstab was telling us, he said he's really surprised even at this level, the lack of fundamentals that the ball players come to him Shortstop. with. And he said, and that, I can explain it in one word, Nintendo, and this is not to cast dispersions or get us in trouble with any sponsors, is that the kids don't play as much anymore. Well, they They're don't. playing video games and doing that stuff, and when we get them, we've really got to work them harder. They don't, they don't really study the game when, when they're watching it or playing it to, you know, to know what to expect. You assume the kid knows something, and yet he doesn't. Well, the base hit for Sigmund, the fifth hit for Belleville, and a little chin music there for Sean Keefe on the part of Jason Emerson. Two or nothing. All sorts of action in the bullpen now. Meath, Marty Young, a right-hander, and Aaron Burke, who pitched earlier in the tournament. There they are. And they're two and one. Nobody out, runner on first, bottom of the fourth inning. Reaching as the train rolls past the center field fence. Slowly, slowly, slowly. There it goes. 2 2 pitch. Right side foul down the first baseline. Fan almost made a nice catch. I think that was one of the Andrews sisters. <laughs> You're not going to let me get away with no, that. No, at all, no, 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 not at all. Everybody else wished we would. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, Keith thought about it. Didn't pull the trigger. Pitch is low. The count is full. Three, two, and no outs. Joel Sigmund leading off first. Runners not being held on. This one going to right field. Fall in there. Cusack, fair ball. And the runners move up a base. Smart play here by Cusack. He sees he runs it in. Nobody was doing anything. No reason to risk a throw across the diamond. On the opposite field base hit for Sean Keefe. So, threat here with nobody out. First and second. And Chad Cotter, a strikeout victim. His only time up. That was back in the second inning. Chad. 
Batting 324 coming into tonight has a chance to help his club out now with nobody out. Runners on first and second. Sigmund at the top of your picture. And Sean Keefe over at first base. Nice pitch. Good. Nice good. Over the top curveball by Emersek. Jason may have lost concentration for a while, but I think uh, realizes he's got to get it back. Good look at Hassenstab over there for Belleville West for the shortstop. One, turning it. Beautiful double play, 6-4-3. Moving on to third is Sigmon. But Pringle, Snyder, and Olsen combine on a classy double play. The only way they're going to do that is that this ball had to be hit hard. Because uh, Macheri gets a little late on the swing. One hopper to the shortstop, makes a nice play. Throw to Snyder at second, makes the pivot, gets up out of the way of the runner. And just in time at first. Good stretch by Olsen. Nice pivot by Snyder. Good play all the way around. So two outs now. The runner on third. And Buss. Uh, check it. That's uh, Tippett now who is staying in and is hitting in the spot. Vacated by the pitcher. His average isn't too bad either. 347. Shows he can swing the bat a little bit. Ball, one strike, two outs. The runner on third base, Sigmund. And foul back. There's a good look at Jason Emersek. He's gone all the way so far. He's given up six hits. He's given up a run. Got good fielding help here to get out of. A lot of potential trouble. One-two pitch. Foul down the right field line, way out of play. He's pitching the ball away from the hitters. He's trying to get that outside corner, see if he could paint the black on the on the plate. Uh, but you know, I think right now I would I would come up and in on the hitter and try to get him up, you know, on the inside above the fist and get him swinging the ball up because he's late with the bat. One, two. Oh, it wasn't quite there, but we did it. <laughs> Strikeout number five, and that does it. No runs, a couple of hits, no errors. A good double play saved a lot of heat for Andrew. One runner left. We're through four. Score remains 9-1. Okay, top of the fifth inning, Andrew comes up with a 9 to 1 lead. They'll be facing a new pitcher, and he is Tim Meath. Meath, who started the game at first base, has done some pitching for uh, the Mighty Maroons. And he, he hasn't done too badly either. He's a 3 and 1 record. He's 30 strikeouts, uh, 17 base on balls, uh, in 24 innings pitch. So he's averaging a strikeout an inning. And uh, with a 3.50 ERA, left-handed pitcher, and that should say some. You know, that, that gives hitters a, a fit every time a left-hander comes out on the mound, and I don't know why that should be. A couple of other changes. Osborne has now moved from right field to first base, and in right field now is Marty Young, a senior. And here is the only player so far for Andrew who hasn't gotten a hit. And that's not because he hasn't tried. He was robbed. Ben Kodwika. He pops this one up into center field. Hilpert there. And the right fielder. Hello. Somebody going to pick it up? Second baseman can't make the play. They're calling it a base hit. Well, so Kodwika gets on the board. And I guess that makes up for the one that... Uh, he screamed to left field and got robbed on back in the second. This ball should be the infielder's ball unless the outfielder calls him off. Apparently somebody called for it. Or at least he thought he did. Maybe it was the uh, 
Bob Gillen, the first base coach of Andrew. I, I would doubt that. He's got to go as a base hit, the first off Meath. The batter is Ken Martello. And the center fielder, Ken Martello, one for two. Started the big inning off in the, in the third inning with a single. Scored the first of the five runs in that frame for Andrew. Here he is with nobody out, runner on first base. In there, one and one. Meath, a big rangy left hander. Six feet, 180 pounds. Looks taller than that. He does, he does. Put. There he goes. There he goes, and foul back on the hit and run. We have to find out who hits where now. If we can see, no, well, I don't think we've got it. But I'll say if we can see it again. You can see the jump that he gets. There he does. Oh yeah, he got a good jump. And protecting the plate. One-two pitch now. Meath comes to home. This one goes to center field. Hilpert shouldn't have a problem here. One away. Second baseman, Tom Snyder. Now with one out, the leadoff man Snyder is up. Snyder two for three. A couple of singles to left and to center. And he scored a couple of runs. We might see it again. We might see the hit and run. He's high with that one. Nine to one the score here the class double A championship Andrew with the nine. One oh pitch. Left center giving chase and calling for it again is Hilpert. Got under that one a little bit. Neither team has played under the lights yet this year, and uh, both teams seem to be, uh, except for the maybe the play a couple of plays before, that doesn't seem to be a problem for either one of them. No, and it's different when you play under the lights uh, to get it used to that, and uh, and it depends on the field you're playing on too. You know what kind of lighting and being in a minor league ballpark, it's going to be better than a lot of a lot of ball. Ooh. And Cusack takes this one. No, they say it did not hit him. It's a wild pitch. That ball hit the grass out in front of the plate. Wow. At first, it looked like uh, Cusack, but the runner moving, so we'll get credit for a stolen base. Kodwika going the down the first second. Quarter in Portland. Watch this. This ball hits out 26. in the grass. The Bulls, 39. Wow, that was, uh, you talk about a 55 foot curveball, that was about a 50 foot <laughs> fastball. Straight down. But they call it a stolen base since the runner was moving. So now the count, 1 0. Oh. And this one is down the third baseline. Cusack, a fly out, a walk, and a single. Hits for Andrew. 1-1. One, one. Delivery. 2-1, the fastball way outside. Kotwika there on second base at the top of your picture. Got that thank you pop-up that everybody ran away from. Went for a base hit. And through. Coming around to score, and there will not be a throw. There's Kotwika with the 10th run. And Cusack with a single to left center. Has his second hit. And an RBI. And another RBI. Pitcher, Jason Emerson. That's his second RBI, and it's 
double digits right now. We got a couple changes here. 35, number 35 for Let's 39. listen in. 35 for 39. Let's go now. Come on. Let's check this out now. Cotter has come out, and he's replaced by Ryan Tucker. So we'll keep track of that. Ryan Tucker, a left-handed hitting six-foot junior outfielder. So he will hit in Cotter's spot. Imrasek, Jason, with a single, a ground out, and a walk. He scored a run. With two outs, and the runner Cusack on first base. Meath throws over there, nothing doing. So the outfield now is Ryan Tucker in left. Scott Hilpert remains in center, and Marty Young in right. This is a good view right here where you can see the Runner at first in his lead. With the left-handed pitcher, you know, you got to watch that leg when he brings it up. As long as it doesn't break the plane of the pitching rubber, then the pitcher can, you know, can go to first. But as soon as he crosses that leg at any point over the pitching rubber, then he's got to deliver home. 1-1 one, one pitch. Nice pickup at third. By Bernard goes the short way. And they are out of the inning. But another run comes in on two hits. No errors, one left. We are now through four and a half. It's 10-1, Andrew. Andrew, 10. Belleville West, 1. Andrew, very, very close to its... First class double-A championship as we go to the top of the fifth inning. Well, you'd never know it from the expression of uh, Frank Ganser, but hey, Frank, you're winning. Smile. Looks you can. <laughs> Uh-oh, there's, there's half smile. All right. Here is Brian Valerius, the catcher for Belleville West, and Emersek, who's given up six hits and only one run here through four. We told you he worked an inning in relief in the semifinal, actually an inning in the third. You're allowed to pitch nine innings total unless the game goes extras in one day. So if you're playing a doubleheader, you can pitch a total of nine innings in a combination of those two games. Mm -hmm. And, it, it, you know, and that's a good rule. That's a good rule. It helps protect the pitcher, uh, you know, his arm at this age, uh, a lot of tender arms. And, and yet, too, you know, on a day like today, you can, pitch, you can throw a lot more pitches, too, because of the weather. Oh, one is high. Valerius only his second at bat. Hit one back to the pitcher in the second inning. Popped it straight up. Snyder. One away. Tom Snyder had a chance to play some chess, waiting for that one to come down and Second baseman, put it Jeff in his pocket. Burton. There he is. No problem. And here is Jeff Burton, who uh, has been impressive tonight at second base. Strikeout and a ground out at bat. Burton, no home runs. Only four runs batted in. Oh, good play. And Emersek is right on the ball. Jason showing the athleticism. Pitcher, Tim Meath. And we've got two away. You know, as a pitcher, you got to be ready to field your own position in case a ball is hit back to you. And he does get up. He's got pretty good for that one. 
He's going to be playing on the U.S. Junior Olympic team this summer, so he'll be getting lots of experience. This one right on the ground, just missed the base, and Olsen will take it by himself. A 1-2-3 inning for Emerson. Nothing across. So through five complete, Andrew with the big lead. Well, welcome back. We want to tell you there's more IHSA championship action coming your way on Sports Channel. Don't miss our back-to-back -back coverage of the Class A and Double A Girls Softball Championships. Starts tomorrow at noon, Central Daylight Time. That's what that means right down there. CDT. Hope you enjoy that one. This one has been all Andrew after a scoreless first. Belleville West got one in the bottom of the second, and uh, it's been all Andrew, five, four, and one in the third, fourth, and fifth. Here they are in the sixth. Leading off the top of the sixth inning, and, shortstop, Zach Pringle. And here is Ron to Zach the press box, Pringle. Ron to the press box. Last time up, hit a ground ball to the second baseman. The pitcher cover. One for three on the evening. Meath, the pitcher. Keith, the shortstop. Routine and 16. over there to Osborne at first base. So one pitch, one away. Brings up the catcher, DeHaan. Meath came on in the fifth. Tom Buss started, went the first two and two thirds, gave up five runs on nine hits. Tippett followed, two and a third, four runs on two hits. Meath so far has been touched for one run. And here is Steve DeHaan who's done some damage. That one right to the backstop. DeHaan got on last time on an error, came around to score. Earlier it fly to left and single to left. One nothing. The pitch. Just inside. A pretty good pitch from here. Well, yeah, we also don't have that center field angle here, so we can't no, that's true. be quite as quite as critical. No, it's like a, as a coach in a in a in a dugout, when you look out there, you know, you can't tell whether the ball is inside or outside, but you could you see the height of the ball. And so, you know, a lot of times you complain because of the pitch being that one's right down there. Up or down, you know, if, if it's we think it's the right height, he say may, he may call it a little bit low. Well, we have a little better angle in, uh -huh. in the dugout. The dugout, you know, is the worst seat, right? You know that. <laughs> Got to keep them honest, though. Terrible. Well, it's not so bad here because they're not as low as they are in the majors. Back up through the middle once again. There's Burton. And the throw, pulling Osborne off the base. Burton, again, showing the good range, but can't turn the throw. That will probably go as a base hit. And the, that'll be the second for DeHaan. Okay, here's the play again. He makes a good play, but then he throws it high and a little bit wide, and his foot does come off. We got a pinch runner. Well, I didn't they, see who it was. Mike. Uh, Jeff Peterzek, number one, is in there. Petrozek is a five foot nine inch senior, the number one pinch runner. So there's Jeff. Your attention, please. Running at first base for DeHaan. Number one, Jeff Petrick. Petrick, running at first base. Petrozak on first base. Here is Mike Olson, and Olson has done some major hitting this evening. Takes that one in there. Olson is single and a double. Couple RBI tonight. Ten to one, Andrew. There at bat. There's Petrzek on first base, and there he goes. And this oh, one, great hit and run, beautiful. And the ball gets by Tucker in left field, and each runner will move up a base. Ball took a hop in front of the left fielder. Tucker would come on to play left the last inning. And they're calling it a double. 
for Mike Olson, and for Olson, his second double, third hit on the night. Get to see this again. Wow, this good is great. Good jump. Boy. Olson has just hit the ball hard tonight. Oh, he is just good hit it. thing. Yeah, two doubles. Maselli. Oh, great play. Oh, great play at home, and Alec call him out. The runner Pirnizic is out on a wonderful play from Sean Keefe to Valerius. With the infield in, Maselli hit one right at the shortstop, Keefe. Keefe. And made Sean a made a fine throw and an excellent tag brought back across the plate by Valerius. Here Watch it, it here. Let's see what the, what the tag's there. Whoa. I don't know. I don't know. Well, must Valerius, have been a lot of dirt rolling in front. Yeah, it must have been. Well, Valerius had to, uh, had to bring that ball across from first base to the first base side. So six to two, the put out. And going to third is Olsen on the fielder's choice. So runners now on first and third, two men away. Got weak of the batter. Ten runs, 15 hits for Andrew. Meath on the mound. And here's Kodwika, who got a base hit when he popped one behind second base. And three players from Belleville West couldn't decide who's going to take it. Hey, they're just hitting the ball like they did, you know, all through the tournament. That's you know, that's what they said. You know, they had power up and down the lineup, and that's what you're seeing here tonight. Well, they had the pitching all year. They have had a rotation that has been darn near impenetrable. They had A.J. Jones throw a throw nine shutouts on the year, and he went today in the semifinal. A.J. Jones, too bad we can't see him pitch a submarine pitch. I love to watch those guys. And that's unique in itself to, to come to the plate and see a guy throw that way. There was a sidearm pitch right there. You know, the submariner comes down a lot lower than that, and, it, and the ball breaks differently. It, it kind of comes up when you throw the ball, right. or it sinks down low in the way. When you throw your curveball, it breaks up, and then the, and the fastball breaks down in the way. You know. The game was 12 to 6. It actually wasn't that close. It was really a 7 1 game before. Uh, ball Here comes the runner going to second, and everybody's safe. Everybody say if the run comes home. Let's see if we can see that again. If we got it on replay, it looked like the pitcher just stepped back. But that may not have been a ball goal because he was going well, to the second base. The Selly just took off. He go. was a dead duck. This is what you call a forced box throw. He did step back. He did step back. And, and he, on, a, on that play there, you got to freeze the runner at third base, and he never did look at him until it was too late. Well, it's 11 to 1 now. And that brings a possible slaughter rule into play, or what they call the slaughter rule. We'll talk about that, uh, about that a bit more. So it goes to a double steal. With Olsen coming in, and Nacelli going down to second. It's the 10 run rule, actually, is the official title for it. We don't want to no, uh, make it unduly bloody, but. Uh, why don't you talk about it? Okay, huh? the 10 run rule is uh, goes into effect after four and a half innings. If the home team's ahead by 10 after the bot of the, after the top of the fifth, then the game is over. But if the home team is behind, then you have to play five complete innings. Burton can't make this play, and here comes the runner around third, and he's going to score. Well, that was a big insurance run right there for the 10 run rule. Maselli comes in on the play behind second base as Burton can't make it. And it's scored just a straight E4. So Andrew just aggressive and now has a, an 11 run lead, which puts even more pressure on uh, Belleville West to come in and finish this one off or try not to have it finished off early. Kodwika now at first base, and here is Martello. And Martello with a base hit and three tries tonight. Nice play by Valerius, the catcher, to come up with that pitch that was way inside. Well, if Andrew goes on to win, as in all 
Uh, it all indicates, or all indications are they will be only the second good hitter, buddy, good hitter team. Now, come on. There you hear Frank Ganser to win both the uh, summer title and the spring state title. There's the informal in summer now. league as in Martello swings. And here's Frank Ganser. He's got a lot more interesting things to say than I do. Let's listen to him as he gives signs in, uh, in sign lingo, yeah. Oh, you have to have okay. a wireless mic on to give signs. Come on, Kenny, know? come on, buddy. Again, Valerius doing a lot of gymnastics behind home plate. Martella with a 2-1 count. Bottom of the sixth inning, and this time the pitch is way outside. Three and one, two out. You know, Coach Ganser has done a fine job at Tin, uh, Tinley Park, and uh, this is his uh, second trip to the state. And I think his career record is uh, 274 wins and 144 losses going into this tournament. And, uh, As he walks Martello, does Meath. He plays very fundamental baseball, and his teams are very well coached. Good hitter up there now. Come on, top. Kavrika on second base, and Martello at first. Ooh. And the shortstop makes the good play. Keith to Burton. And it could be the last inning coming up. So a couple more runs on a couple of hits. There was an error, two left. Andrew now has a 12-1 lead. Belleville West has to score a couple just to keep this even and keep it from ending at the end of the sixth. Twelve to one, bottom of the sixth. Whole bunch of changes. Fiore, Vince Fiore has gone into first base instead of Olson, and we'll try to spot them all for you. Uh, if you take a look at finishing second, what it means, and it's not a lot of fun, even though you've come very far. And there is Olson, who is going to sit for a while, if not for the rest of this. And Mike has had. A fine evening. Here's Bernard. Bernard a double and two trips. Up against Jason Imrasak. He's gone all the way, giving up six hits. Just the one run. A low one and one. I tell you, Jason still looks very strong, just as he did at the start of the ball game. Went an inning in the third in the semifinal this morning. And he's humming tonight. We told you, drafted by the Pirates. Has to choose between signing with the pros or going to Evansville. Talking to his brother early, he, uh, earlier tonight. And this one is pulled to the gap in left field, but coming in and making the play is uh, Tucker. Check it, Leatherman making the play. I had my scorecard flip. Look out. Leatherman makes the play. He gets five and a third. The runner and run. He hasn't walked anybody, and that's a key in any ball game. You know, if you don't put, you know, hurt yourself by walking people, you got a good chance of coming out on top on ball games. A lot of pitchers struggle, and they walk somebody. Next guy sacrifice, yeah. base hit, scores him. So. Well, what I was saying was that the Jason's brother was saying, he said he didn't automatically uh, reject the idea of signing with the pros. That even though Jason was a, uh, a low draft pick, he said uh, they offered him the same kind of money uh, they offered about the tenth pick, and he'd have to consider it. So I guess there's a lot of well, decision it, making. Got to weigh a lot of yeah, a lot of factors there. Uh, a young man takes that uh, offer, plus you know he gets his college uh, you know paid for. But when you go into professional baseball and you play, let's say four or five years, it's very difficult if you don't make it and get released, is to go back and start school all over. That's that's the hard thing. Sure, the money's there, but boy, the study habits are gone, and that makes a big difference in uh, you know in making a decision. So, good it's point. Tough. Good point. I was going now. Two swinging strikes, two and two. Sorry, Mike. And, and talking with the Belleville coach, 
you know, he talked about him, you know, playing pro ball and continuing his college education, in the, you know, in the offseason. And, you know, when he got released, fortunately, he was finishing up his degree. And then, he, you know, the job was open, and that's how he came to Baylor. Yeah, Chuck Hausenstab is a good story because he, he took six years to finish college in between baseball seasons. As Osborne goes down game. swinging, Do <laughs> there it is, the Nolan the meter, in this case, the Jason meter. And that is, in fact, number six. And that Andrew's, even better number, if you want to say. Andrew's like. starting to celebrate a little bit early here. Yeah. And they got the sparklers out. And <laughs> this is Joel Sigmund. Sigmund, one for uh, one. Sacrifice a single to center field. Now, again, this could be it right here if... Uh, Belleville doesn't uh, score a couple of runs to come with a nine. The ten run rule, the S rule, I'm going to say, will be in effect. So this could well be the last out of the ball game. Championship time right here. One pitch away. 0 and 2. You can hear the Andrew fans. Final score, 12 to 1. Andrew, there are your state champions right there. If you can find them, they're all there somewhere. Great ball game. Nothing across in the bottom of the sixth and last inning. Two strikeouts, a total of seven for Emersek. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. Final score, the Class AA State Finals. The champion, Timley Park Andrew High School. Thunderbolts have struck 12 to one over Belleville West. We'll take a break and be back. Well, that's the story. Andrew High School of Timley Park, the Class AA state champions, and on the field right now, they're carrying that trophy like it's a pot of gold or Indiana Jones times 20 right there. There they are. Coach Frank Ganser coaching in his 14th year, and he's got his first state championship. Mike Olson had three hits, a big, big night at bat for him. Big story, of course, Jason Emersek, complete game. Six hitters, striking out seven, didn't walk anybody, and it was called an inning early because of the 10 run rule, Mike. Yeah, that, and that's a tribute to their hitting. Uh, they came through, and everybody through their lineup got a hit tonight, and uh, several had multiple hits, and it's a fine exhibition of hitting. Well, Frank Anser said there was always the pitching. The hitting came around late, and they sure did. Okay, and for Coach Chuck Hassenstab, they certainly did well to finish second, and this is a team with certainly a lot of class if they didn't have a lot of clout tonight. Well, we'd like to thank all our friends at the Illinois High School Association. They always help us out. Dave Fry, the executive director. Don Robinson, who was here, the associate executive director, along with Jim Flynn on site, tournament director, assistant executive director as well, along with Charlene Bremberg, Marty Hickman, and Ola Mundy. Our next Illinois High School Association event on Sports Channel coming your way tomorrow at noon will bring you the 1992 Class A and Class AA Girls Softball Championships. Tonight's game has been produced and directed by Rick Godwin. Executive producer for Sports Channel is Greg Bowman. Remote facilities provided by Trio Video of Chicago. Once again, the final in the Class AA Baseball Championships, the state champion. Andrew High School of Tinley Park defeating Belleville West 12 to 1. For Mike McDonald, I'm Mike Lederman saying so long from Springfield. The preceding has been an exclusive presentation of Sports Channel. Good night, everyone.